How you doing? We over here with Forbidden Art. Filming the one, the only, one of the true pioneers of graffiti, Terrible T-Kid 170. What's up? What's up? Hey, when did you first start writing? That's, that's a question. <laughs> I started writing then when I was about 13 years old. I was a little toy back then. Nobody ever really knew me. I used to have names like King, Sin 102, Bro 2. You know, that was the kind of thing back then. Everybody saying, yo, bro, and shit like that. But um, I was 13, man. That's a long time ago. It's a real long time ago. And uh, back then, um, you were considered one of the one of the top dogs, one of the people that were pulling out the most colorful stuff on the on the subways back in the old days. Um, uh, what what would you say in comparison to the art that you see today, as far as back then? Well, back then, you no. Know, Art back then is a lot different than art back now. You know, art that's happening now, the graffiti that's not, because back then we used to do it on the trains. You know, and ever since uh, New York City eliminated that problem with people riding on trains, you know, it's not the same to me anymore because I used to write. The reason I did so many is because I want everybody all over the New York City area to see my name. You know, and every train I did used to travel all over the place, you know. I used to try to get my stuff seen in Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, you know, Staten Island. I go out there and do tags and dorps and everything out there because there ain't really much trains out there. You know, today, you do art on walls, you know? And it's a different kind of thing, man. Because when you're doing graph on, doing graph on the subways, you know, it's a certain adrenaline you get, you know, a certain kind of rush, a certain kind of high you're gonna get, you know, by doing it on the trains, because first of all, it ain't somewhere you're supposed to be, you know, it ain't legal. You know, ain't nobody there telling you what to do. You just do your thing, you're in, you're out, you know, you get busted, you get busted. You get over, you got over. I got over, you know. But, um, it's totally different today. Today is pretty cool too, because now today I don't have to worry about a cop coming over my shoulder and tapping me and saying, yo, let's go, you busted. You know, now I go, man, I gotta get with a little group here and shit called FX. You know, we get walls legitimately, you know? Which is cool because that way my art lasts. It doesn't get crossed out, it doesn't get this, I ain't gotta worry about nothing. And my art is there, I express myself, you know? And um Tegan, uh you were pretty popular for uh the Vamp Squad, um, <laughs> which was you know, vamping people in other terms, you know, robbing people back then. How do you feel about that today? Yeah, I don't live like that today. I like that. I mean, me and a couple of guys from Yankees, man. Shock 123, uh, Mike Dust, Pesa, Crazy 505. You know, we started a group called the Band Squad, TBS, man. You know, because, you know, we, we, was, we was crazy, man. You know, we used to go down to the yards and stuff, and, you know, we used to make a territory, our territory, you know, our yard, the ghost yard, that was our yard. Nobody went to our yard, because we didn't want it getting hot. What I mean by hot is like, you know, a lot of people coming in and the cops are going there all the time. We just used to have a close little, close knit group, and, and, and we used to just, you know, do our thing. And anybody we caught, we used to beat the crap out of them and take their paint, man. That's, you know, that's funny, that's messed up, man. You know, because we make a lot of enemies, and I still got a lot of enemies because of that. You know, I just hope that, you know, people forgive me for what I've done and stuff, you know? I was pretty fucked up. But today, today, I'm, I'm not living like that, you know? It's different today. Today is more about, you know, expressing yourself more, more art type thing, man. Back then it was just street. You know, we was all street kids, man. You know, doing graffiti all over the place. And uh, today, today is a different world, man. Different world. Today, people ain't coming about their hands no more. Now it's about, popping in your head, man, cap, and there you are, just laying dead, all capped up. Tekid, back then and now, who were your partners? Back then, man, I had many partners, man. You know, one of my first bombing partners when I used to kill insides was uh, Pesso, INT, and uh, then I progressed. I went from him to Shock 123, and I was my partner. I ran with Padre Dose for a while. You know, he used to write Bach, he taught me a lot of style, you know, he influenced me a lot. Um, I wrote with a lot of people, I wrote, I did a piece with Kaz, 
I did pieces with Fell. I mean, I, I did pieces, a lot of writers, man, a lot of writers. Dust the scene, burn scene. Nah, scene's a cool guy, man, he's all right, you know? Um, I done wrote, I done wrote with a lot of people. Now, I got new partners now, man, you know? I like the partners I got now, because they're real, you know? They're cool. You know, they ain't all about this uh, cutting your throat type thing, stabbing you in the back. Like, certain partners that I had, which will be named nameless, you know, they know who they are, you know? I don't want to say it, but you're a king, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yo, uh, guys are right now, man, like Pearl One, Shame 125, Nomad, you know, Colt. They're pretty chilly people, man, you know? We get together, you know, we plan our walls, you know? And we execute what we gotta do, you know? We execute what we gotta do. T-Kid, usually uh, we see names written. I always see a Margie somewhere along in one of your walls. Who's Margie? Oh, yeah, that's, that's my woman, that's my wife, man. You know, she, she's, uh, she don't like me right man. She don't like me going to feed man, because she says it takes up too much of my time, you know? She says it takes up too much of my time and it attracts a lot of attention. And she says I don't need so much attention. You know, she can give me all the attention I want at home. You know, she's a true, true Puerto Rican woman, man. You know, she's selfish, but I love her. You know, and most of my art is inspired by, by my family, you know? Because... What I do is just an uh, expression of my feelings, and I'm feeling good, I'm doing good artwork. The message I want to state to writers, man, is that art is a creative feeling, and it's an expression of feelings that you have. If you're out there getting high, what kind of feelings do you have? You know, that ain't the move, man. That ain't the move. You know, if you're doing that shit, just cut that shit off right now, man. That shit ain't the move, you know? No, all I got to say is, you know, you a writer, you a writer, you an artist, man. Be yourself. Be yourself, you know? You're gonna get influenced by other people. That, that's natural. You know, you're gonna get influenced. But yo, that influence always turns into an expression of you, you know? You find something that works, you use it and use it and use it, you know? And uh, never worry about you biting off somebody's stuff and stuff like that. Yo, you're an artist. You know, you're doing your thing. Ain't nobody doing it for you. You're doing it for yourself, you know? Just keep a clear mind, an open mind, man, and everything will be cool, man. Yo, my name is T-Kid. All right, T, thanks a lot, man. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Forbidden Art. We're interviewing Coke 2, Master Blaster Bomber. It's all city, man. Coke, when did you first start writing? I started writing. Well, I started writing, like, ch checking out the graph scene, like, in uh, 79, and, um, a lot of writers back then influenced me and shit from like the four trains. I was really watching the four trains. Back in the day, you were infamous for being king of the fours, man. How'd you feel about that? What, what do you feel when you see somebody writing king on their throat and you know they're not really king? Well, I, 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 I'm not one of those souped up kings, you know what I'm saying? I just like, uh, I write king because you no, know, like right now, I figure I'm the king of throwups right now. You know, not king of all graffiti. I'm like the king of throw-ups right now, so that's why I've always been putting king in my C's and my throw-ups, and like, I started writing king when I took over the fours and the five, and I took over the five and the twos with throw-ups, and they came white trains, I destroyed them shit. Me and my old partner, Cone, from TNF, the original Cone, and then uh, I took over the fours and shit, like, right after uh, Van 2 left the, left the fours. I had a little competition on the fours with like, uh, Sharp and Delta and Spin. They were, they, I think Spin took over the fours too, Delta and Sharp. And it was like a, a, a battle for the fours, but I came on top at the end. And I had the, the line into, until it went down, until the new trains came out. How do you feel about the art back then and the art today? Uh, what are the comparisons? Comparisons? There's really none. Except for now, it's like, the writers are like getting more into detailing in their pieces, they want to get more wild now. Back then, it's, I think, you know, if it wasn't for the writers back then, the graffiti back then we wouldn't be where we are now. You know, because the writers back then are the ones who really started this and influenced the writers now. Um, what, what do you plan to do with yourself? Are you, do you, do you expect to take craft seriously uh, as a career or, 
or are you just gonna take it as a part-time hobby thing? I'm not gonna be stealing paint and writing graffiti for the rest of my life now. You know, I'm gonna, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna come back here and then. You know, for a lot of writers figure I never really stop. I've been smashing shit for like so many years. And like, graffiti sometimes gets a pain in the ass because when you get up so much, people think you're souped up or you got an ego. Then they start crossing you out. They start writing phony names. And, and then when you see them, they, you know, they don't want to do nothing. This graffiti is like really a pain in the ass hobby sometimes because you got a lot of bullshit jealous writers out there that just get jealous of you. They envy you. All right, Cole, this is Forbidden Art. We want to thank you for the interview. And um, if you got any shout outs to sell out to any, to send out to any people, you know, this is the time for it. Any of your boys. Now, I got some shout outs like to all. Uh, to say um, um, myself especially because don't get me wrong I ain't trying to be souped up or nothing but I'm gonna give a big shout out for me because I've been around for a long time and I'm gonna stay here and wreck shit and I'm gonna keep wrecking shit all you writers out there who want beef bring it on you know I have war whatever you want to take it to the, to the highways to the walls to the streets to the fucking trains whatever bro one how you doing Chillin'. Chillin'? Cool, cool. Yo, he had a uh, bit and out. We got a couple of questions to ask you. Okay, what can you tell us about the old days? Well, the old days, to me, those are the fellas that turned around and pioneered this. Um, I had a few people that I used to look up to. But uh, it's like we picked it up where they left it off. You know, and, uh, but there was a few errors before us that were that they were pretty good that I looked up to, that I used to get ideas from. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. What do you think of the, what do you think of the graph scene today, my man? The graph scene today is excellent. You know, I see some work that is just outstanding. I have no problem admitting that I'm not the best. When I see some stuff that they do out in Europe, and out in other nations, you know, stuff over on the West Coast, you know, these kids are pretty good. You know, but, what do you think about those European writers? Oh, some of them that I know are excellent. I have, you know, their lettering, I, I guess New York concentrates the most on their lettering instead of the scenic backgrounds. They, uh, they're real artistic over there. They work a lot on the scenic backgrounds. We're gonna start trying to see what we can do about blasting some scenic backgrounds. Yeah, man. What, what, what does graph mean to you, bro? For me, to tell you the truth, it's a form of expressing myself. It's also, it's therapeutic to me, you know. Um, I hate all the controversy that goes on beyond the, you know, the bombing brings problems and beef and going over with one another and, and, and causing fights, but craft to me is just a form of expressing myself. It's therapy to me. I enjoy doing it. You know, it, it also gives you recognition. And um, it's a good way to meet a lot of people that are pretty cool. When did you come up? How did you come up with this name, FX? What does FX mean? Well, it just stands for effects, like sound effects, graph effects, art effects. What we did was that when we painted this here wall, we all came up with a conclusion that we had to get something to call ourselves and uh, some name. And so what we did was that we all agreed upon one name. And when we all agreed upon that one name, that's what we decided to call it. Uh, it was a group conscious thing where everybody took a vote. Dig it, man. You know, Bro, I've been watching you from a, for a while now, and I, I've watched you come a long way. I mean, I seen you when you was just bombing and doing throw-ups, you know, and getting up all over the Bronx. I've noticed that you expanded all over the five boroughs now, and I've also watched your piecing style improve. I mean, how, how do you attribute to that? What, what do you have to say about, you know, how, how, how far you've grown in your style and piecing? I mean, your designs, your colors, I mean, they're awesome. Well, I... Gotta give tribute to people that are turning around. To tell you the truth, everybody bites. Whoever tells you they don't bite, they don't get ideas from somewhere, from a magazine or from somebody else's piece, I could personally tell them they're full of shit. A lot of people may say they come up with their own stuff. Somewhere or another, everybody got an idea from somewhere. Yeah, everybody's influenced by one, and, one way or um, another. I had a few people, a lot of artists that influenced me back in the day that I got ideas from. I didn't want to ask you this, because I know it's kind of a touchy thing with you, man, but, uh, I understand you used to be down with uh, TAT and Bio and them. And now, uh, from what I understand, you're not so closely affiliated to these guys. Uh, what happened? 
Um, basically, I guess there's just personality differences, and they just had to go their way, and I had to go mine, and it was the best thing to do, actually. That's pretty cool, huh? that's pretty cool. That's pretty humble to you too, man, to be like that. Because I know a lot of writers that wouldn't think of things like that, you know? Yeah, you well, the same personality problems. I really don't think it's about dissing them in any way. You know, I think they just, uh, they're good, they're talented. I learned something. I learned off of them too. I give some of them problems, not all of them. But that's pretty cool, huh? Her, her one, who, her own, the man. All right, everybody, this is Per one. And uh, you heard it straight from his mouth. Your TV screen. Later. Tell me, what you write? Oh. Hove? Hove one, G U. Okay, tell me, uh, I seen like uh back in like 83. 82, 83, I was a king. King of the twos. King of the twos and what are what other lines? Fives. I hit all the letter lines, number lines, and some letter lines. So I, I see that you disappeared a little something like in the middle eighties. What happened there? I faded out for a while. And then, uh, what made you do this comeback now? I love bombing. You love bombing? Who Hell inspired yeah. you to come back? Coke 2. My man. And what's the situation with MPC now? I see you used to write MPC up a lot. MPC is a dead crew. They're just a bunch of motherfuckers. So who you rolling with now? I'm rolling with KDFX. 
the GU. What else? I've been bombing the Bronx like fucking crazy. I've been slamming anything in my way. It's like the old days, bro. I love doing that shit. I've been doing it since I'm 11 years old. I've been bombing. I'm a fucking bomber. Who cares if my pieces don't look good, bro? My fucking shit is still up. So fuck you all if you don't like it. Word, peace. Yeah, that was nice.
Thank you.